guys. So this is the video where we're going to be focusing on the calculations for a heating curve. Okay, so if you do not have a calculator in front of you, you're really going to need to know that um, and have that with you. So remember, a heating curve looks like this. Okay, where you start off at a solid, start to melt, become a liquid, you start to vaporize, and become a gas. Okay, so we have solid, liquid, gas. You start to melt here, and you start to vaporize or boil there. Okay, so if we're going to label this point A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, and that's just going to help us with figuring out which section um, of the graph we're working with. Okay, now um, anytime you have a change in temperature, so for example, section A to B, C to D, or E to F, you're going to be using the formula Q, Q equals MC delta T. Now you should know from class what these variables mean, but let's review. Okay, Q measures your heat um, in joules. M is the mass of your substance measured in grams. Capital C is your specific heat. Um, and it's measured in joules per gram degree Celsius. And it's also different for what state of matter you're in. And then delta T is equal to your change in temperature, okay, which is your final temperature minus your initial temperature, okay? So then your question is, well, what do I do when the actual phase change is occurring? So the phase change is occurring from B to C and D to E. That's when it's in that process. And in that process, there's no actual change in temperature, okay? And so in that case, we would use the formula Q equals M delta H, okay, where M still means mass, um, and delta H is our change in enthalpy, which enthalpy is just our energy or um, heat, okay, and so it takes a certain amount of energy for every gram that you have um, in order to make that happen, okay, it's the energy required to change that phase. Okay, so if we look at this problem number nine, which is at the bottom of the back of your notes, okay, it says calculate the heat required for each change shown in the graph um, where we have two grams that goes from negative 20 to 120. Okay, and at this point, this is when you should always, always, always draw and label your graph. Okay, it is very difficult to do this and not make any mistakes if you don't have an actual graph to look at because we know that if I have water, okay, negative 20 is going to be down here, and we know that water starts to melt at zero degrees Celsius, okay, and then it starts to vaporize at 100 degrees Celsius, and that we are going to be stopping somewhere when it's a gas at 120 degrees Celsius. So these numbers are really key in showing us where our segments break down and how we can break up this problem, okay? So from, let's use our little chart here. From point A to B, we know we're gonna be using Q equals MC delta T, and we'll be using that same formula as well on uh, segment C to D, and as well on segment E to F, okay? And on segment, um, B to C, we're going to be using Q is equal to M delta H, and the same here. But the difference is, is from A to B, we're going to be using C of our solid, because that is when we would have ice. So I'm going to put ice here, okay? For um, segment C to D, we're at a liquid, so we would use the one for just normal liquid water, which is 4.184, and 
And from E to F, we have a gas. So for a gas, we would use 1.90. Okay, now I haven't told you delta H. Are you supposed to just know this? No. Ms. Nichols made a mistake in her um, homework that she gave you. She needed to have, I needed to have told you these things, okay? So um, delta H of fusion, which is um, where melting occurs, okay, is going to be equal to 336 joules per gram, and this is just for water, um, and delta H of vaporization is equal to 2,260 joules per gram, okay? So when you see these for water um, and any substance, you will be given these numbers. So basically, the key thing is knowing which formulas to use when. So let's break this down into our segments, okay? So first we're going to have segment number one, okay? We're going from A to B, which is a change of, we're going from negative 20 degrees Celsius, and we're changing to zero degrees Celsius, which means that delta T is going to be equal to zero degrees Celsius minus a negative 20 degrees Celsius. And we subtract a negative, becomes a positive. So my delta T can be equal to positive 20 degrees Celsius. So I use my formula, Q equals MC delta T. And I'm going to use my mass, which is 2 grams, times my C of ice, or of solid, which is 2.10 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I'm going to multiply it by my delta T, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Now, when I do this, my grams cancel out with grams, and Celsius cancels out with Celsius, and all I have left is joules, which is perfect, because that's what I know Q is measured in. And then I multiply my three numbers together. So 2 times 2.10 times 20 is going to give us 84 joules. So that means it took 84 joules in order to move, heat up 2 grams of water from negative 20 to 0. But we know we're going from negative 20 to 120, so we still have a long way to go. So we need to do our next segment, segment number 2. Okay. So in segment number 2, we're moving from point B to point C. And there is no change in temperature. We are melting and undergoing a phase change, which tells us that we're going to be using Q equals M times delta H of fusion. So if we plug in our numbers, we have 2 grams, and we know that delta H of fusion is 336 joules per gram, which means when we multiply these two numbers together, 2 times 336, we get 672 joules because my grams cancel out with grams. So I'm going to fill that in to my chart as well. Okay, so we have this information. Okay, and I'm going to kind of erase part of what we got going on here so that I can have a little bit of room to work with. Okay, because we, we've only done two out of the five segments, okay? Because now we are on segment number three. And in this case, we are going from point C to point D, where we are changing from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, which means my delta T would be equal to 100 minus zero, which would give us 100 degrees Celsius. So when we do this type of problem, we have Q equals MC of liquid times delta T. So we plug that in. My mass is 2 grams. My C of liquid is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. And my delta T is 100 degrees Celsius. So that means Q for this segment is going to be equal to 2 times 4.18 
times 100, and it will give me 836 joules. So I'm going to put that in my chart. Now, let's move on to segment four. Segment number four is when we are going from point D to point E. Now there's no temperature changes here. All we're doing is vaporization. We're going from a liquid to a gas. So this means we're going to be using the formula Q equals M delta H of vaporization. So when we plug in our numbers, we would have 2 grams times uh, 2,260 joules per gram, which we're getting these numbers from up here. And when we do that, 2 times 2,260 will give us 4,520 joules. So we'll fill that in, 4,520 joules. And last but certainly not least, we have segment number five, where we are going from point E to point F, in which case this is going from 100 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. And so therefore my delta T will be equal to 120 degrees minus 100 degrees Celsius which gives me 20 degrees Celsius. So Q equals MC of gas times delta T. My mass is 2 grams. My C of gas is 1.90 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my change in temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So when I multiply all these things together, 2 times. 1.90 times 20, I get 700 or 76 joules. So, one thing you should notice is that the um, change in energy, the amount of energy required to vaporize 2 grams of liquid, is a lot more than it was required to melt or to really do anything at all. And that's because it takes a lot of energy to break the intermolecular forces that are holding those atoms in that liquid state. Okay, so in order to truly separate them all from each other so that they're all acting independently, it requires a lot of energy. And that's a trend that you would see through them all. But in order to do the last calculation, the total amount of energy would be when we add them all up together. So 84 plus 672 plus 836 plus 4520 plus 76 will give us 6188 joules. Okay, that is how much energy was required to go from negative 20 to 120. So hopefully you can re-watch this video over and over again because you will have a qu question like this on your quiz and on your test. You can guarantee it.